In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to fit acrylic secondary glazing to ordinary single glazed windows like these. It's a change that will make quite a difference. It will reduce condensation, pretty much eliminate drafts. Most importantly of all, it will make a big difference to how much energy is lost uh, on a cold winter's evening and therefore potentially help you reduce your home's carbon footprint. And I've got a sheet of it here because I have been fitting it to my home over the last two or three months. In this video, I'm going to show you what kind of windows are suitable, how to measure, and how to fit it. And later in this video, I'm going to be getting the thermal imaging camera out to try and find out whether it really has made a difference. Now, I've been sitting next to windows which have got this type of secondary glazing on in January and February. Certainly, the room felt a lot warmer, but it'd be nice to get some scientific or at least semi-scientific proof. This video is made by HGS Reach, which is the Residence Climate Action Group of Hampstead Garden Suburb in North London. But the advice in it is really suitable for anybody who is in a similar position to us, which is living in an old home where tight local planning uh, rules mean that we can't, for instance, just replace our windows with ordinary, reasonably priced double glazed units. And I think there's a very important additional message in this video, and that's this. A lot of people think that if they live in an old home, and this house was built in 1908, it just means they have to put up with drafts, some rooms being chilly, or turning the boiler up absolutely to the maximum on a cold January evening. And that's absolutely not the case. If you live in an old house, you do not have to rip the insides out and start again if you want your home to be warmer and more energy efficient. There's lots of practical things you can do to make a difference, and this is one of them. Before you order, you need to understand how it works. It's a three millimeter sheet of plastic, specially designed for this type of application. It's actually clearer than glass. There's a special magnetic tape which sticks onto the plastic and more magnetic tape that sticks onto the window frame. And the sheet, which is quite light, is held in place by the wonder that is magnetism. If you want to take it down in the summer or to open a window, you can just clip it off and store. The tape is 12.5 millimeters wide unless the sheet is truly gigantic, more than a meter squared in which case it's 20 millimeters. And you need to be sure there's room for the tape all around the window. So this window is fine for instance, it's a bit tight up here with a vent, but I've measured carefully, it's okay. This door, however, is a no-go. It's not wide enough for the tape. You also need to ensure that any window handles or any burglar locks don't stick out. It's easy to test this, just drag a ruler or board across the window and make sure that they don't obstruct. These were my measurements. Now at this point you've got a choice depending on your DIY skills. Plenty of firms will send you the windows all made up with the tape in place. I used a firm named MagnaGlaze. This isn't a recommendation, it's just who I used. There's plenty of firms out there. Or you can order the acrylic sheets cut to size, buy the tape separately and put it on yourself. Made up sheets are normally around about £100 per square metre, which means a decent sized bay window will cost £300 to £400. The DIY option though, maybe it's half this, Okay, so my sheets have arrived, nicely packed. You can see that the magnetic strip has a plastic film on it to protect the sticky surface. What you do is hold the whole window assembly in place and then carefully pull that plastic strip out and the window is therefore gonna stick in place. You need to get it right first time because that magnetic tape is very sticky. If you change your mind, it may damage the paint. So the first job is to remove the white plastic film on the inside so you can see what you're doing. Leave the transparent film on the outside until later to protect the plastic when you're doing the installation. You can use books, CD cases, remember them, or coins to make a little stack on the windowsill so that you can hold the sheet in place exactly where it needs to be. For some people, a second pair of hands might be useful here. So you build a little pile to get the window exactly where you want it, and then you tilt it back a little so you can get at the pink backing tape and pull a little off. Then you put the window back and pull the film out in the gap between the window and the frame. So it pulls out and now the tape is stuck to the frame exactly where you want it. You've done one edge and now you need to do the same thing for all four edges.
And that's the pin done. If you take them off, it's important to put each frame back exactly as it was to ensure that the magnetic strip lines up properly, north to north and south to south. I made sure of this by putting tiny little sticky labels on the acrylic sheet and the window. So let's see the proof. This is footage shot with an infrared thermal camera that turns heat into colour. It was taken a cold evening. What you want to see is bright colours. Bright colours means warm, you can see a little bit of the radiator underneath the window. What you don't want to see is dark colours. Dark colours mean part of the house is cold and it means I'm losing heat to the outside. So let's take off one of the small panels and see what happens. That's a dramatic difference. Okay, so I think now it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. Oh. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Which is, how can it be sustainable to install sort of gigantic pieces of plastic all over your house? Isn't it more sustainable, for instance, to use glass, which can be recycled? Well, let's look at the data. First, window glass has to be recycled separately from glass bottles and jars, and at the moment, in our part of North London at least, it's not recycled at all. And secondly, window glass is made from raw silica. It's not made from recycled glass. And anyone who's seen glass being made or work knows there's a huge amount of energy involved. So if we look at the data for the embedded CO2, which is a measure of the carbon dioxide released when something is, is made, glass secondary glazing is about twice that of the lightweight acrylic sheets that I've been fitting to my house. And then let's look at the big picture. This is a three bedroom semi-detached house, heated by gas central heating and a pretty new condensing gas boiler. Based on April 2022 energy prices, our annual gas bill is around about £1,700 a year and we create from burning that gas about 4.5 tonnes of CO2 a year. Now is 4.5 tonnes of CO2 a lot? Well it's about the same as driving a petrol family car to here and back and that's every year. So yes, secondary glazing and indeed any investment in energy saving is using raw materials and this will include oil. But if I can reduce my gas bill by just a small percentage, the payback is going to be pretty quick. And also, the reduction in my carbon footprint is going to be very real. Is this right for every household? No. If I was refurbishing my home, I'd use proper sealed double glazing units which do a much better job of preventing heat loss. I'd also use internal insulation and install a heat pump to get my home really ready for the future. However, I hope this video has shown that you don't need to go to that expense to start making a difference. We at HGS Reach aim to produce a wide range of reference materials and help for local residents to cut their carbon footprint. But I hope this video has got you thinking about ways you can reduce your energy use and also the amount of CO2 that your home emits every year. So thanks very much for watching and goodbye.